Blessings, 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 grace, and mercy to you. I'm happy to be before you today, just giving you this word. It's, it's, it's one that's on my heart right now. You know, we are watching uh, the, the end time things hitting so tough, and and you know, one way we know that that uh, this this is going to be some sad. You know, we are in sad times. We understand the sad times, but there's also a lot of joy because. God has given us joy unspeakable. And he wants us to focus on, of course, the, the, the things that people suffer. And we are praying for those across the globe that are suffering. We can't forget those who are going through hard times, who are going through trials and tribulations, sickness and even death and grief and all of the other things in between. We're praying for those who are in the in the grips of war, we're praying for those who are uh, in the in the caught up in these different weather events, you know, who've been caught up in tornadoes, caught up in floods, and whatever. But I want to talk about something that God has given us and does not want us to forget, because He's still a God who who has given us. His, his blessings, even though we see hard times on this earth, God is still God. And he wants us to focus on those things that he has given us freely. And one of the things he's given us freely, uh, the apostle Peter writes in 2 Peter 2 and verse 1. And he comes on, excuse me, verse 2. He comes on with the uh, salutation of grace and peace. Grace and peace, you know, I, I say grace and peace, peace and mercy or whatever, you know, God gives me to say. But what I want to first remind most of us, just put us in a reminder, that we are to speak grace. We are to speak peace over other people. We are to speak these things over people because they don't necessarily walk in it all the time. But we can speak, speak those things into their lives. And this is what I am all about right now. Speaking love, speaking life into the life of others. And also, when we're speaking life to others, we ourselves are receiving within ourselves this beautiful, beautiful gift too. So I just want to just speak this to you. Peter comes out like this. He said, grace and peace be multiplied to you. I love that. He didn't just speak grace. He didn't just speak peace, but he said, let it be multiplied to you. That means you get grace and peace in abundance. Beautiful. And the knowledge of God that you understand the knowledge of God that is multiplied in you, that we would, would sit back and just ponder and put back into our memory those things that God has done for us of the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. We are so incredibly blessed. And so many times we forget how blessed we are that we have the knowledge of God, the knowledge of what it means to operate out of grace, unmerited pardon, the knowledge that it is operate out of peace, the peace of God that transcends all human understanding. Man didn't give it to you, and I promise you, man can't take it away. He can do things to your body, but he can't take away your peace. Peace, come, peace comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from God. Paul and Silas sat in prison singing, singing songs to the Lord, praise songs in prison. And I promise you, the prisons were not like the prisons in the United States and most other places either. Most likely they were chained, but they were singing praise songs because there's always a melody in your heart when you know the Lord. There's always a melody. And so I want to talk about this, this thing that we're in, this place we're in with God. And Peter wrote about it so eloquently. And that thing is, he says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. His divine power, not our power, his divine power have given us, I just love this, all things that pertain, all things that got anything to do with life and godliness. I often tell people, live while you're alive. 
I hear people complain so much. Oh, they, can, they, they, they know they can really complain. I don't have this. I don't have that. I need this. I need that. What do you have that you can say thank you, Jesus, for? None of us got it. Well, some people got it. Well, let's put it like this. Some people got everything that's, that's material, and they may not have peace. They may have fine houses and, and, and not even live in a castle, can have the best, you know, jet planes and, and boats. But they may not have peace. They could have all things that money can buy, but they don't have peace. They may have millions and millions and billions of dollars, but they don't have peace. You can't buy it. You can't bottle it. You can't put the peace in a bottle. Can't nobody give it to you. It comes only from God. The peace of God that transcends all human understanding. I mean, it goes over our heads. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's wealth right there. That's wealth. Joy is with it. Peace and joy. That's wealth. That's something that money can never buy you. Money, can, money answers all things when it comes to the physical. But money answers nothing when it comes to the spirit. These things must come from God. Man can't give it to you. Only God can give it to you. And if you have the virtues of Christ, you're rich. You're so rich, it's ridiculous. You're so rich, it is absolutely, it is absolutely crazy. So he says, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Can you imagine that? You've been called by glory and by the virtue of Christ. You can say, little old me? Yeah, little old you. Been called by glory and virtue. Again, man can't give it to you. Man can't produce it. Man can't muster it up. It can't come from flesh. It comes from spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. We know what exceedingly means, and we know what great means. It's, it's almost like you're saying exceedingly, exceedingly, or great, great. I mean, it's like over the top. That God has given us an abundance, an absolute abundance of his precious promises. What, what promises? What promises do we have from God? What are they? Well, they're, they're a multitude of promises. He gave us promises to live a godly life. One, that's, that, that's the first one. And then if we look at the, the lives of people, so many people, so many people complain every day about what they don't have. Complain every day about what they can't do. Complain every day, I don't have what that person have. I can't go where that person go. I, 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 don't, I don't have the funds. I don't have the clothes. I don't have a car. What do you have? Well, let me just tell you this. If you have Jesus, you have Yeshua, you have everything. There is nothing that he cannot provide for you. But you have to trust him. You have to trust him. People have no idea, generally, if, if you just ask people, what are the promises of God? You know what? They won't even know. They can't even tell you. But we should know what promises we have from God. And people have said, well, I believe in God, but you know what? I'm just so depressed. I don't have what I want in life. It don't matter. If you get God, you get it all. Because one thing I know, God will straighten every crooked place. And he will bless those. I have been to nations where there has been ex extreme poverty. And I've learned something. I've learned a thing or two from being in those nations. I've learned that you can make things work. You can, you can make do with anything. And one thing I have learned, I'm going to tell you this, and I, I, I'm going to tell you, I've learned that most of the time, 
those people don't even have an issue with being depressed about what they don't have. They don't even sit back and wonder, I don't have this or I don't. Have. Let me tell you what I saw. And, and it blessed me. It blessed me to no end. I was in Africa. I was in, not everybody think Africa is just full of jungles. It is not. It has, yeah, it got some jungles. But it also have uh, cities just like any place else have cities and cars and sky, you know, they have high rise buildings. They got everything everybody else got. But I was happened to be in this particular village, going through this village. And I was watching the children young teenagers these were teenagers the little ones were running running around playing with animals and the teenagers were sitting around these trees they have these trees amazing trees in kenya called the balboa trees i've never seen these trees are monstrously huge but i saw these teenagers in different you know going through this village different areas what these teenagers was, was sitting around just talking and laughing and there was some riding the bikes, but they were talking and laughing. And I said, to, I told my assistant, Sherry, I said, I don't see one cell phone. These kids are communicating with each other. In America, I promise you, and it might be this way in other nations, I don't know. But in America, you can have teenagers clunk of them get together go and eat in the restaurant and they're all on their phones they don't even talk to each other anymore no communication it's every day all day they are on their phones i don't care who's with them they do not notice because they're on their phone looking at social media and they've lost the art of communication they've lost the art of of fellowshipping they don't even know how to fellowship they are watching social media but you're with a social group that they're totally ignoring. Go out to dinner and you'll watch most families on their phones. Husband and wife don't talk. They're on their phones. That's a travesty because the family is growing apart. And, and, and that is an absolute travesty. But here we're talking about right here, the great promises, the great promises and the precious, they're great exceedingly and precious promises. One of those promises of God is family, family, friendships. I, I I get so sad when I hear people say, I don't want any friends. I've had some terrible friends and I don't want any more friends. I have many acquaintances, many, many people I can go around and enjoy their company. And then I have friends. And there was a time in my life when I didn't think I wanted any friends. Oh, I got to the point I didn't think I had friends because I had one friend to double cross me. One. And I felt that, well, everybody might be like that. And I had to get over myself and I had to humble myself and I had to say, God, open my eyes so I can see those around me who care about me and not just be stuck on this one person that I had a problem with. And you know, he did just that. He did just that. And so I look at life now, I look at life as such a gift. I have a large family, a very large family. Got a lot of kids, got a lot of grandkids, and I got great grandkids. And I'm so incredibly rich with love. I am so incredibly rich with love just to watch these grandkids play and some of them are too old to play and so they're older and you know just just being with them it's a gift it's a gift to see the new ones you know and watch them grow up I got the youngest one is three months old and when she just to the point now she's cooling and all of this with me and I sing to her about Jesus and she cooled back to me and I said, well, how precious, what kind of gift is that that you can't appreciate? That's a gift. That's a beautiful gift right there. You know what? My memory will always remember this baby cooing at me. And I don't remember it anyway because I recorded it. We have so many blessings. These precious, precious promises, family, friends salvation. God has, has given us the promise of salvation. God has given us the promise of Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall have power. 
promise. The promise of forgiveness. If we repent, he forgives. That's a beautiful promise. Forgiveness. Oh, I don't even know what to say about that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having a harsh God? That if you make a mistake, that the, this this thought would be, you're done. It's it. It's over. You had a chance. You're out of here. Not our God. He's a loving and kind, forgiving God. Mm. Also, when we think about our God, the promise of healings. God heals us. I've I've been healed of things, and I God is so. I can, I can't even tell you, I can't even tell you how I feel when I have had the miracle of healing in my life that God answered that prayer. It's such a blessing. We also had a promise that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Have you ever been in a situation and you wondered if God can bring you through? And you wonder if God even knew you was in this situation. God, do you know? God, do you know I'm in this situation? He knows. He knows. He's going through with you. He's with you. You got the Holy Spirit? He's with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even if he doesn't answer, he's still with you. We get it all twisted. Well, I don't, I don't hear God. Okay, so you don't hear him. That don't mean he's not there. That don't mean he's not overshadowing everything you do. That don't mean he's keeping the worst from you because he may be protecting you. He doesn't have to say anything. He don't have to, like, you know, show up and probably scare you to death if he did. His angels are with you. The angels of the Lord encamps. You know what encampment is, right? Encamps around those who fears or reverence him. And he delivers them. God is with us. Hmm. God is with us. You know, I was lost once in a state. Shouldn't have been driving by myself, but I was. I was going to visit my son when my son lived up in up in the New England states. And uh, this is when my brother had given me a GPS and 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 the battery ran down. And I didn't um it wasn't charged. I don't know, I didn't have a charge or something for it in the car. And I was in a state I'd never been in before. And I'm driving down a road and all of a sudden I, I just heard this real soft, soft, soft voice. He leads me beside the still waters. And I just happened to look to my left as I was driving and there was a river, a river. No movement, just a river. And so, I said, God must be talking to me. And I just start following the river. And I followed that river. You know, it's just, this road kid was right alongside this river all the way to the interstate where the sign came up and I could find my way. God is amazing. Story goes a little further than that, but I don't need to tell that because my point is God said he leads me beside the still waters. And he did. He's with us. He knew God knows. What is, what, is it that God, what is it that God don't know? He knows it all. And he brings us through these sticky places. He brings us through these tight places. He brings us through frightening places. My mama's house caught on fire one time. Mama just got her house. Mom and daddy. My mother told me, she said, Cynthia, I want you to watch this food on the oven. She, I was upstairs talking to my friend on the phone. My mom, I was 17 years old. My mother was getting ready to go back to work. She was a crossing guard. I want you to watch my watch my food. I got a pot on downstairs and watch my food. And I was talking, and my mother left to go to her job as a crossing guard. And I'm sitting up on the phone just talking to my friend. And all of a sudden, I mean, I don't even know how long it was, but all of a sudden, I saw smoke coming up the stairs to, to the room where I was. I was like, what is that? And I and I get up and I, I didn't even hang up. I just jumped up and I started running downstairs and, I, and the stairway was full of smoke. Downstairs was full of smoke. But I knew I made my way to the kitchen 
and that saw the pot was burning. There's fire under the pot. And I did not know that you don't fill up a pitcher of water. I knew what a pitcher of water was. I'm in a smoke-filled kitchen. I go into the cabin, I get the, the pitcher, and I fill it up with water, and I threw this water on a gas fire. And I want to show you what happened. <laughs> fire shot up just like that. I watched this fire go up, crawl the ceiling over me, hit the curtains behind me, and came down. I'm standing in the kitchen in a fire. My mother had this laminated uh, ceiling, and I'm standing, and it was, it, fire had, fire has a life, I don't care what anybody say. That fire, when it took off, and it, I could just see it, and it seemed like I heard it going over me and came down behind me and I'm standing in the kitchen. My parents had just got this house and I'm jumping up and down. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I don't even know how long I stood there screaming because I was like, I didn't burn my parents' house down. They just got in this house. I think we'd been there for like a month. I don't even know how long it took, but all, all the things I know, because I, I was frantic and all I knew, something grabbed me right here by my shirt and yanked me because I couldn't see. It was nothing but smoke around me. Yanked me out of the kitchen and yanked me out of the, wouldn't let me go until I got outside the house. It was a fireman. Let me tell you this. It was years later, years later that I thought about that incident. And I said, how was I breathing fresh air? I was breathing fresh air there was a pocket of fresh air around me and I'm in a smoke filled house. Don't tell me God does not cover us and God is not with us. I know better. I know better. See, I can never turn from God because I know better. He, had, he has been with me too many times. God said he is with us. God says he will fight for us. When we are in trouble, we don't have to take matters into our hands. All we have to do is wait on God. All we have to do is call his name and wait on him. He said, I will fight for you if you would only be still. And another one, he says, I will fight for you if you only be silent. You don't have to make a lot of noise. You just have to know that God is with you. God is with you. We spend so much time trying to fix our problems instead of saying, God, I give this problem to you. God is with us in times of trouble. His angels are with us in times of trouble. I've had several incidents I can't hardly sit in this chair, y'all. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm making myself sit in this chair. I can't tell you how many times God has come to my rescue, and I knew he was coming to my rescue. I knew it. I'm 71, almost 72 years old. I got a whole lifetime of testimony. I got a whole lifetime of testimony that I can tell you about the goodness of God. And that's why I'm telling everybody, don't turn from him. Don't waste your time looking for something else. You've got the best if you got Jesus. And if you don't know him, oh, listen, we got to show people who, we got to show them the way. We got to show them the way to God. They will not know if we don't show them. They will not know the blessing, the promises of God, if we do not show them. He's no respecter of persons. He is no respecter of persons. I'm telling you, I know God. He is with us in times of trouble. And when he fight our battles, let me tell you what he do. He delivers us out of them all. God delivers us. Like I said, I'm in my 72nd year of life. And I know my God is able. And here's what I'm going to say too. And even if he don't deliver me, if he let me go through the hard place, that's a blessing too, because I'm going to learn something from that hard place. He's going to teach me something in that hard place that, that I need to know for my good, for my growth. And so I can also minister to someone else to let them know. If God is for you, honey, who can be against you? 
If God is for you, who can be against you? It's a mute issue. A mute issue. He provides all of our needs according to his riches and glory. I know many people worry about not having enough money or to, you know, send their kids to school or do certain things, you know, maybe things for at home. But I tell you what, that's the same God. You know, I'm a, I, I, and, I, and I know this, I have a friend and I, I, and I told my friend, she's always blessed people. She just blessed people. She was blessing them coming and going. And she fell into a situation where um, she was going to, where well, she was getting letters that she's going to lose her house. And she was crying, I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose. I said, girl, let me tell you something. There is no way on this planet that God is going to let you be a blessing to all the people you've blessed. And then you end up on the street with your baby. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That ain't the God I know. You can, and I'm not saying somebody's been selfish all their life. I'm saying somebody give, 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 give. I said, there's no way. He's going to let you be on the street. She didn't believe me. I prophesied to her, you would never be on the street because you have been a blessing to so many people that God is getting ready to bless you. Well, she not only had one place to live after that, she's, had, she's moved to three different places never been on the street when her car went out god blessed them to get another car somebody almost gave it to them free god provides all of our needs i didn't say your wants i didn't say he he, he provide all your wants i said god provides all of your needs according to his riches in glory and this is what we have to Always tell people, pray, pray without ceasing, knowing that God is going to come through for you. Know that he's going to come through. He's, he's not a God who leaves us as orphans. He said, I'm with you. That's a, that's a promise. That's a benefit. I'm with you. I am with you at all times. And then I'm going to go back and finish this sentence. That through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. If we are not people who are lusting after things, lusting after people, but trusting God for all things, it will come through for you. God has called us to be priests in the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors in the kingdom of God. That, that invisible kingdom right now that's, that's on the earth through his people. That one day he's going to bring to the earth and manifest it on the earth. But he's called us for such a time as this. He's called us as ambassadors. We have our citizenships in different nations. But we also have our citizenship in heaven. We have dual citizenship. He says to you are a holy nation. We can't forget who we are. We serve a God that would never let us down, that would never forsake us, that would never leave us, that would never abandon us. Abandon us. He said, I am with you wherever you go. I am the great I am. I am with you and I will fight for you. Our God is amazing. I pray that this message blessed you. I pray that you're able to take it in your life and run with it. Amen.